ओ मज्ञान तुम मिलन दस से ज्ञान ज्ञान शिलाफे चक्षु मिलितम बिना तस्मिन श्री गुरु गण नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापितम येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदामयं ददाति स्वपदांति कं वन्ते हम श्री गुरु श्री युतापदतम बलम श्री गुरु वैष्णवम श्री श्री रूपम सागर जातम सहागना रघुनाथम उत्तम तम सजीव साधवैतम सावधूतम परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखा नृतम से हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत ते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचना गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय महामंदेतारिणंदमाधवंश्रीचैतन्यश्वर So, this is a seminar on chanting, as recommended by all of you last week. Um, it's a long seminar. Um, it may take us two weeks, this week and next week. It starts from very basic. This is not my presentation. Um, it's made by some devotees in Chopati in Bombay. Um, <clears throat> it contains everything about chanting it from very basics from shastras um different type of chanting um why chanting is difficult different kinds of inattentiveness different stages of chanting the ten offenses to the holy name um practical whatever is most commonly known about chanting 
this seminar is complete in itself yet at the same time please bear with me i have not changed anything in the presentation that i have taken as it is so some things may be repetition and some things may be um, very valuable to us nonetheless we will go through all because something or other will be helpful for someone or other with that faith <clears throat> taken from the instructions given by Srila Prabhupada, the Nam Tattva. <clears throat> this is the mantra. There is one book by Sachin Swami, The Nectarian Ocean of the Holy Name, taken from this book. And there is a book called Harinam Chintamani by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the grand spiritual master of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. <clears throat> Harinam Chintamani was actually the interaction between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur is Nam Acharya and they are discussing about the Tattva of Nam. Um, the initial part, many of us may be aware or may have heard, but repetition is always good. But the later part is something that we have never discussed in this platform. So, so um, some initial slides have Chala Prabhupada himself spoke two minutes, two, three minutes um, on um, what it means to chant Hare Krishna. So some of them have audio from Shri Prabhupada. So chanting Hare Krishna is a sublime method for reviving our transcendental consciousness. Can anyone say if you are able to hear or not at all? You are able to hear, Prabhu. Yes, we are able. It's low, but we are able to hear. Okay, thank you, thank you, Prabhu Jis. <coughs> few things are not clear. Um, we are able to hear, but uh, things are not clear. That clear. Yeah, I will try to explain after Prabhupada says. So we, um, um, uh, Shla Prabhupada says here. Um, we are originally Krishna conscious living beings, but due to our association with matter since time immemorial, we are trying to be the lords of material nature. We are trying to be the enjoyers because that's how we have trained ourselves. Um, but in that process, we are actually um, getting more and more entangled in the laws of material nature. The more we try to lord over, the more we try to enjoy the more we have a desire to enjoy, 
um, we are becoming more and more entangled in this material world. And then Shri Prabhupada kept goes on saying, this chanting of Hare Krishna and this Krishna consciousness is not an artificial imposition on the mind. It's not some some kind of hallucination that uh, um, that is being. It's not a artificial imposition, but it is uh, artificial imposition means we are trying to um, make ourselves believe something and uh, do something. It's not artificial imposition. But it is the original constitution position of the living entity. But this is who we are and this is the original relationship that we have. And one can one can experience it by um, 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 by chanting the holy names. When we chant, we can experience that there is a divinity in that. Um, there are four stages of consciousness. Animal, animal stage where uh, we engage in same activities as the animals of eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That's what material life means. There is mental speculative stage. There is... In one is actually a stage of spiritual understanding. That passing stages of sense, mind and intelligence. One is situated or thousands and thousands. Chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's direct enacted from the spiritual platform that passes all lower status of consciousness, empty, sensual, mental, and intellectual. There is no need of understanding the language of mantra, nor there is any need of mental speculation. Nor any intellectual adjustment for chanting Mahama. It springs automatically from the spiritual platform, and as such, anyone can take part in the transcendence of sound as the chant. Mm. So there is no need to understand the meaning of the mantra, or um, this is mantra. Mantra means um, it's it's. It has descended from um, a spiritual platform. It's always all situated on a spiritual platform. Um, there is no need to try to perceive the mantra through the senses, through the mind, and through the intellect. Um, mind means trying to give some give some um, understanding. Um, intellectual means using our intelligence to understand, explain. But it is something which is transcendental, which has descended on a transcendental platform. It springs automatically from the spiritual platform, and as such, anyone can take part in the transcendental mm. sound without any previous qualification and sound connection. There is no. Even a child can take part in chanting, or even a dog can take part. Um, Prabhupada is telling we have seen practically even a child can take part in the chanting and experience or even a dog can take part. There are instances where one Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going through the forest of Nemesharanya and uh, uh, the monkeys and the elephants and the lions, they took part in the chanting of the holy name because the chanting of the holy name is on a transcendental platform. The dog is not seeing from a mental speculation perspective or intellectual ability what it means how it how etc or giving any kind of um, 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 using his subtle body to understand but he can immediately goes into ecstasy even a dog and there are many instances where devotees are chanting on the streets and even the dogs are attracted even the animals are attracted even the child whose consciousness is not at all developed cannot think cannot use his intelligence because he's on an annamaya platform he's just he tries to perceive the whole world just through eating and even the child starts dancing and uh, participate in the transcendental sound vibration so it is it is directly descending on a transcendental platform and there is no need to understand the mantra from um, mental intellectual platform. 
and then Prabhupada says everyone can chant and dance and ecstasy even if there is no qualification um, um, and <laughs> there is a child taking place a woman um, two women and then there are some sannyasis and in the middle you see the sannyasi with black complexion in the lower picture that is Bhakti Teeth Maharaj he left us left a mortal plane due to cancer in the year 2005 um, very vibrant sannyasi um, chanting to the heart from the lips of a short foot on the bar so that immediate effort can be used Chanting should be heard from the lips of a pure devotee of the Lord. Then one can experience the immediate effect. Actually, to the extent one can absorb in chanting depends upon how pure the um, subtle body has become, the mind intellect. Uh, when the subtle body is contaminated, while chanting, the mind will go all over the, all over the places. But when the subtle body is purified, then one can simply sit down and... Uh, um, focus on uh, hearing. One can simply hear. And if one can come to the stage of simply hearing the mantra, um, one will immediately go into ecstasy. Um, and to the extent, now, um, usually when devotees advance, their mind becomes very, very strong because uh, mind and intellect becomes very, very focused and very Krishna-centered. So when we hear from the mantra like kirtan or chant in association of pure devotees because their mind are so absorbed in the holy name by their association our mind will be our mind can immediately absorb although on a normal basis if we try to chant the mind will be very distracted but when we chant in association of pure devotees um, no matter how distractive or how many problems we are going through, our mind will immediately start focusing on the holy name. So, the in, and by doing that, our life starts becoming purified. That's why there are two important aspects of Krishna consciousness. One is chanting, one is kirtans. Both are extremely important. And uh, one becomes much more nourished during kirtans than during the holy name also, than during personal japa. Uh, because we are chanting in association of um, um, other devotees. <coughs> so immediate effect can be seen. Mm. Although milk is pure, when the milk is touched by the snake, the milk becomes poisonous. Likewise, the holy name is all pure. When it is touched by the lips of non-devotees, the effect is not there. So, chanting from the lips of non-devotees, Prabhupada says, should be avoided. There are many, many people, they are trying to become great kirtaniers, um, but their kirtan will not have a divine effect on our heart. Um, as a matter of fact, the person, to the extent he has devotion, his kirtans will have that much spiritual energy. It is one thing to hear because the sound is very sweet and the melody is very sweet the tune is very sweet um, and so we like to hear and it is another thing when the spiritual energy in the kirtan is very high so as much as possible we should focus on the spiritual energy like Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur the spiritual master Srila Prabhupada he was on his deathbed um, in, um, in Calcutta um, and uh, naturally, when somebody is about to leave the body, devotees gather together and they chant. So, um, Saraswati Thakur asked one, I mean, one devotee started singing a bhajan. Um, um, so, Saraswati Thakur can absorb himself. He was always absorbed, but as a 
matter of etiquette uh, devotees chant the holy name praying to krishna all the time um, so saraswati thakur told that devotee uh, that uh, stop it and then he told another devotee bhakti rakshak shridhar maharaj and he told him you chant so saraswati thakur wanted to show and the first devotee who was singing he would sing very melodiously and he was a great kirtanier so it doesn't matter how how um, impressive we are but how much devotion we have bhakti bhakti rakshak shridhar maharaj was not a great singer but he was a sanyasi and he has lot of deep devotion in his heart um so as much as possible even when we are hearing the hari krishna mahamantra on youtube as much as possible hear from devotees um not basically try avoid hearing the kirtan outside is con especially those who are not uh, pure devotees of the lord otherwise it will have a poisonous effect on our consciousness it is so much admiration energy of both krishna and rama are form of admiration directly to law and they mean to have further start para is supreme further potential to law this potency on address of hare helps us to reaching to the law the material energy called as maya is also one of the most potential of law as such as we are also marginal potential chanting is a transcendental call towards the lord hara represents the energy shrimati radha rani hara um, and then krishna and rama um, chanting we are calling out to hara shrimati radha rani we are calling out to krishna rama also refers to krishna rama means the supreme enjoyer the supreme enjoyer is krishna rama here does not mean that we are chanting hari krishna and we are thinking of radha and krishna when we are chanting hari rama we are thinking of sita and lord ram it's not like that hari rama we are also thinking hari means radha rani and one of the name of krishna is rama also um there rama means the supreme pleasure um or uh, um um the supreme enjoyer um um and hari rama when we think of lord ram then hari rama become incompatible how can radha rani be with rama so it has uh, jiva goswami explains the meaning of this mantra um material energy and spiritual energy is a incompatible combination um when we are trying to develop material desires and chant the hari krishna maha mantra which is entirely spiritual um we will not be able to experience because of the maya shakti of the lord but when we are calling out um uh, o radha rani o krishna please give me protection please attract me towards you when there is that divine prayer and divine calling then um, one comes under the internal energy hara of the lord um form of addressing the supreme pleasure or energy of the lord which is radha rani krishna is all attractive rama is supreme enjoyer supreme pleasure maya is the material energy and hara helps us to reach a supreme lord hara or shrimati radha rani um um there is external energy internal energy internal energy is represented by radha rani the divine energy what we feel in um during kirtans that is that then we are under the control of divine energy um that divine energy 
will help us to reach the supreme lord um so we should i mean hari krishna maha mantra if we are chanting it brings us under the divine energy and takes us to the lotus feet of radharani and lotus feet of krishna no other means is as effective in this age of kali as chanting this maha mantra um the chanting is a spiritual call for the lord and his internal energy o krishna o radharani um to pre- to protect the condition soul please help me please help me advance please help me progress um um chanting is your alone time with krishna like i personally don't like anyone uh uh, uh while i am chanting uh, whether it is my phone whether it is another person that's your personal time that's why what i like the most in chanting is the very early morning when everybody is sleeping i am awake the lights are off and now this is my personal time with radhani and personal time with krishna and calling out as 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 long hours as many hours as you can calling out and that will put you in a transcendental state in a divine potency and you get lot of strength from doing that so this chanting is exactly like the genuine cry of a child for its mother um um oh radharani oh krishna just like a child is calling out to the mother when the child is in need or call out to his father when he is in need likewise sitting in this material world in a material body amidst the cycle of birth and death we are in the in the ocean of material existence which is full of anxiety we are calling out oh radharani oh krishna please help me progress please help me advance mother hara helps the devotee achieve the grace of the supreme father hari hara helps to take us to hari hari is krishna and the lord reveals himself to the devotee who chants this mantra sincerely um um glories of the holy name so this verse comes in padma puran nama chintamani um, krishnas um um chaitanya rasa vigraha uh, nam chintamani chintamani is a stone chintamani um and the stone can fulfill all your desire chintamani so nam chintamani krishnas um so the name of krishna nam of krishnas is uh, chintamani it can fulfill any desire you have um the name is very um yeah so as much as possible try to desire spiritual um, um realizations progress absorption um um chaitanya rasa vigraha it will bestow all spiritual emotions all spiritual benediction um all rasa also means our relationship with krishna um um, um this holy name will bestow upon us 
our relationship with Krishna. Like there is relationship of Madhurya as a lover, Vatsalya as parental relationship, Sakya as a friend of Krishna. These are called Rasas. Um, uh, um, Dasya as a servant of Krishna or Santa, neutral relationship, a relationship of appreciation of Krishna um, without any specific service. So Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, the holy name of Krishna has all the Rasas within it. And uh, the holy name works differently with different entities based on their Rasa. Based on your Rasa, the holy name will bring out that kind of devotion in you. So holy name is very personal. And uh, um, as those mellow develops in you, um, whatever desires you have, however you want to serve Krishna, all the desires are fulfilled. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasavigraha Purna Shuddho Nitya Mukto Abhinnatvam Nama Namina Abhinna, Bhinna means separate Abhinna means non-separate Nama Namina um, The name and the possessor of the name Nam and Namina Namina is possessor of the name are non-different Abhinnatvam Nama Namina um, It is not true with any living entity in this material world In this material world like for example the name Shamananda and the personality Shamananda are different. Um, I am not there in my name. You can refer me. Um, you can call me by, by my name, but I am not there. Another example Radhe Sham Prabhu gives is there is no water in the word water. So that this needs to be entered to, in the bank. <laughs> I did. Uh, the name water and the word the the water and the name water are different. Just for example, if you are thirsty, then you want to drink water. If you drink water, water will quench your thirst. Um, but if you are thirsty and if you say water, your thirst will not go away. Just by saying water, you actually need to drink water. So water is not present in the name water. You actually have to drink it. Just by the name, it does not have the same effect. That is, everything in this material world is like that. Um, 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 but Krishna and everything spiritually is transcendental. Transcendental means they are equally potent. Abhinna nama nam, nam, nama namina. Abhinnatvam nama namina. There is Krishna present within his names. Unlike water present within the name water. Um, so the name is as powerful as Krishna. Um, but it reveals according to one spiritual advancement. Just like any other spiritual thing, deities reveal according to one spiritual advancement. The holy place, the holy dham, everything reveals according to one's progress. Likewise, the name also reveals according to one's progress. But just an understanding from Padma Puran that the Lord and name are non-different is very uh, potent um, when we are chanting especially early morning when no one is around i don't like any distractions during chanting i don't like people running around lights turning off and lights turning on and a lot of distraction because then my mind will be distracted to many things but rather if there is nothing around me everything is kind of silent and then i only focus on Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And gradually and slowly, we can go deeper. Not contaminated by uh, material qualities. Um, Purna Shuddho. Shuddho is pure. Uh, Purna Shuddho. So there is not even any tinge of material qualities. Rajagun, Tamogun, Satvagun, nothing. It is a pure transcendental name. And it will immediately, if we are able to hear, it will immediately put us on a transcendental platform. Uh, all material desires, the senses become active. All the thought processes of the mind and intellect, everything is in three modes. But because the name is all pure, when we associate with the name, we are immediately transported to the transcendental platform and 
all senses becomes inert all desires vanish at least the time when we are in transcendental and all, the only desire remains is keep on chanting keep on chanting chant more chant more just continue doing it um um okay um nitya mukto purna shuddho nitya mukto bhinna tvam nama namina nitya mukto nitya means always and mukta is liberation so the holy name of krishna is always liberated so while chanting the holy name of krishna we are immediately transferred on a liberated platform how because while chanting the holy name we have no material desires we are not thinking the senses are completely inert and we are completely on a transcendental platform we are with we are absorbed in uh, our meditation of our spiritual meditation it can be radha and krishna it can be the deity form of krishna like today morning bhagavatam class sanatan priya prabhu was mentioning um um quoting sanatan goswami uh, he mentions that krishna reveals to a devotee in his mind not physically eventually the, getting a physical darshan of the lord is very rare there are instances where devotees got the physical darshan of the lord like sanatan goswami on a very highly elevated spiritual platform but for a common man the person can get the darshan of the lord in his subtle body in his chitta in his mind and when the mind is focused um, mind can be focused on just hearing the name if you just hear krishna um, krishna is there um, if you or you can meditate on a form of krishna like a deity of krishna or a picture of krishna krishna is there um or the qualities of krishna like krishna is so merciful um krishna is so humble um krishna um um always take a submissive position in front of devotees krishna never acts on any egoistic platform um um krishna always want to make everyone happy um <laughs> so when we are thinking of the glories of krishna transcendental and the past times of krishna purna nityo nit purna shuddho nitya mukto bhinna tvam nama namina this is from padma puran there is example but i don't know what example is referred to because it is not my presentation so some things if it is just hidden words probably i don't know with what intention what was in the mind of the devotee who designed it chanting is the most important element of devotional service shri jiva goswami prabhu in his bhakti sandarbha says chanting is the chief means of attaining love of godhead um, um chief chief means um it does not depend on any paraphernalia um you don't need anything to chant all you need is you need your beads and you need your mind with to be with you and you need some personal space for yourself um no qualification required high birth wealth material qualification um anybody can chant even a dog can chant even a child can participate no qualification required by humility and meekness one attracts the attention of krishna and achieves krishna prema which is a complete perfection of life if you start absorbing yourself don't think that now uh, i am getting there i am um, advancing i have krishna's mercy um, these are all signs of pride um so um as you absorb yourself more and more in chanting the holy names remain meek and humble my lord please help me um as of now i am present in this body i don't know how long i will stay um please help me advance um uh, please protect me from um uh, from anarthas please protect me from ego please protect me from um all material influence please let me find happiness in you alone because because of our conditioning we have trained ourselves to find happiness in many many things in this world so a prayer my lord please let me be so satisfied in you alone 
if we are satisfied in Krishna, then that desire will not go away for other things. Rupa Goswami on chanting. When the holy name is chanted, what happens? Rupa Goswami says, Tunde Tundavani um, Vituyate Labdhaye. The, the devoted desires to have millions and millions of tongues and ears to chant and hear. When the holy name starts to really vibrate, actually Shri Prabhupada says how much we have advanced in chanting, chanting becomes effortless. When our chanting is very shallow, then we have to put a lot of effort to chant, to try to focus. But when, um, as we advance in chanting, chanting becomes effortless. Like the words just flow from your mouth and you just don't want to chant. Uh, one devotee said, how do I know if my chanting is very good? You just don't want to chant. After finishing 16 rounds, you, 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 you feel, oh, I want to chant more. And sometimes because of time constraint, you're not able to do. So Rupa Goswami on a very elevated platform, he says, I need millions of tongues and ears to chant the holy name because I am not satisfied. The moment I'm chanting, I feel blissful, but the moment I stop chanting, then I feel emptiness in my heart. So, and uh, um, um, the devotee is blissful. At the same time, he is not satisfied because um, he wants uh, so many mouths and so many ears to hear the holy name and to vibrate. So he wants to go deeper and deeper and more and more and more and more and more. And there is no question of stopping. The moment he stops, he feels uh, um, something is missing and he again wants to keep vibrating. So this is, this is the real effect of chanting and we are aspiring. The, we are aspiring um, by practicing Krishna conscious to experience that, that form of happiness, that, uh, that absorption. Um, Hindi and Bolte Sukun, that complete it's a transcendental peace. It's not just absence of material desire. It's a, it's a divine potency. We want to experience that. We have experience at some point of the time, but my experience I was discussing in the morning, my experience myself, in the beginning we get it. And then for some time, there is a, a difficult phase where we find it difficult. In the beginning, it's like described as uh, Lord special mercy to increase our faith because if right in the beginning we don't experience the holy names then who will take up the chanting of the holy names um, so the Lord wants to give faith to his sincere devotees only sincere devotees get that experience anybody who in the beginning likes chanting for few rounds maybe in beginning few days or few weeks or few months who likes you should know he's a devotee of Krishna that experience does not come to everyone. For, for most of the people, in the beginning only, when they chant, they don't experience anything. But if you are continuing from previous life, the Lord wants to give us faith. So he will give you a very divine experience. But then um, the reason we are in this material world is because we have anathas. So after getting and developing the faith, then we go to another stage of chanting which is our natural um, uh, state with anarthas. And because of anarthas, the mind starts to wander and uh, we cannot focus on the holy name. And gradually, the holy name purifies the mind and slowly, slowly, that absorption builds up. Um, and then we reach this stage of desiring millions of tongues and ears to chant the holy name. Nam Prabhu dances on the mouth and in the courtyard of the heart. Um, actually, Bhakti Nath Thakur says, when we start chanting the holy names, initially the holy name is chanted only from the mouth. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But th there is nothing that vibrates in the heart or anywhere lower regions. It's just lip service. Then next level of chanting, it vibrates in the heart. The, the holy name comes out from the heart. And even next level of holy name, the, the holy name comes out from the belly, from the stomach. Means the whole body becomes saturated with the transcendental vibrations. And every limb in the body seems to chant and vibrate with the holy name. And that is the experience when devotee 
fields i need millions of tongues and millions of ears so nam prabhu dances on the mouth and in the courtier of the heart he conquers the activities of the mind and when we are absorbed in the holy name then all the chattering mind is like a chatterbox always speaking all the chattering of the mind stops at once um and conquers the activities of the mind um mind is a enemy and mind is a friend as well but when it is absorbed by the holy name it becomes our friend therefore all the senses become inert um eyes don't want to see anything else other than the lord ears don't want to hear anything else other than the holy name tongue don't want to speak anything else other than the holy name um um none of the senses have any other separate desire from krishna and uh, if you ask them um do you want some material pleasure um then uh um, the senses says no we don't want they become very inert and they are overcome by the divine potency of the holy name shastrik evidence there are unlimited shastrik evidence brihan naradiya puran states hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam kalo nashteva 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 gatir anyatha hare nam the name of hari three times for the purpose of um confirmation hare naam hare naam hare naam eva eva means certainly eva kevalam certainly is the only way eva kevalam kalau in this age of kali nashteva 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 means no other way three times again to emphasize that there is no other way there is no other way there is no other way gatir anyatha anyatha means again anything else anyatha gatir anyatha that will give us the destination in this age of kali specifically holy name is for the age of kali every uh, other yoga also the names were chanted um, occasionally but in kali yoga this is the only means in fact shri prabhupa said 99% of our progress is um is uh, um based on chanting the holy names of krishna otherwise there is a good chance we may act on a intellectual platform and mental platform but the holy name immediately puts us on a transcendental platform then the senses and mind becomes inert and one is overtaken by that divinity in this age of kali there is no alternative no other alternative no other alternative no other alternative for spiritual progress then the holy name the holy name and the holy name of the lord um the more shri prabhupad said at one point of time based on how much attraction we have developed for the holy name we have made that much advancement uh one may be practicing krishna conscious for 20 years but how much he has progressed in krishna consciousness depends upon how much taste he has developed in the holy name the chanting prabhupad said chanting of the hari krishna maha mantra is a barometer like barometer you measure what is the temperature 65 70 75 80 likewise in a devotional barometer you measure how much i have advanced 65 70 75 80 100 means um you have full taste in the holy name and zero means no attraction to the holy name spiritual barometer kali santan upanishad says narada conversation with lord brahma in the beginning of kali yoga narad muni how can the fallen souls be liberated be liberated in kali yoga brahma simply to the chanting of hari krishna maha mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari iti sodakshanam nam nam kali kalmashu nashanam natta parantara payo sarva vedeshu drishyate sarva vedeshu drishyate you go and search narada all the vedas you think there is any other way sarva vedeshu drishyate jao khojo koshish kar lo sarva vedeshu drishyate natta parantara payo kuch aur isse aasan tarika nahi milega you will not find any easier means than this um dwapar yoga satya yoga very difficult to make advancement satya yoga you do meditation for 60000 years Trita Yuga, um, you do Ashmeda Yagya, which take years and thousands of Brahmanas and um, unlimited amount of gold and wealth for one Ashmeda Yagya. Um, Indra perform hundreds of Ashmeda Yagya 
and he became extremely proud. So Indra, I mean, he's a, he's a demigod, lives for millions of years. He performed 100 Ashwamedha Yagya and that is like too much that he did. Um, and anybody else who does one Ashwamedha Yagya, he become insecure. So it is such big of a task to perform one Ashwamedha Yagya. And Dwapar Yuga elaborate deity worship, not like the deity worship we do here, but elaborate deity worship. Kali Yuga, what, what the result one can obtain from 60,000 years of meditation and Ashwamedha Yagyas and deity worship in Kali Yuga one can attain simply by sitting in one corner in the room and chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Um, so, Natta Parantara Payo, Kuch or Melegani. Um, it is Sodakshanam Namnam, these 16 names, Kali Kalmashu Nashanam. Uh, the effect of Kali Yuga will be destroyed. What is the effect of Kali Yuga? We are quarrelsome, hypocritical, um, um, short lived. Manda Matir, Matir is intelligence. Manda means very low intelligence, foolish, ill advised. Um, Pango, ma Manda Matir. So we have many disqualification because of age of Kali Yuga. Yudhishthira Maharaj said, as Kali Yuga is progressing, he started seeing people are becoming greedy, people are becoming envious, uh, people are becoming angry. So Yudhishthira Maharaj understood Krishna has left the planet. He got a thought because Narad Muni told Yudhishthira Maharaj, soon Krishna will disappear. This comes later on in Bhagavatam, the first canto itself. Um, and Yudhishthira Maharaj just seeing that people are acting out of envy, anger, greed. Greed means they're not satisfied with what they have. Uh, previously, the Brahmanas get little food and little wealth by begging and they are satisfied. And now Brahmana are becoming greedy. They have everything for their sustenance in this life, but they want now more and more and more. So when he saw these effects in the people in Kali, he understood Krishna must have disappeared. And then Arjuna came. Arjuna went to see, to meet Krishna in Dwarka. But Arjuna, when he went there, he realized that Krishna has actually left the planet. Arjuna was dis dis distorted, completely depressed. And he came back in a very depressing mood. And um, Yudhishthira Maharaj has no guts to ask him, is Krishna there? Has Krishna left all of us? Yudhishthira Maharaj is no guts. So Yudhishthira Maharaj is asking Arjuna, what happened? You look very depressed. But Yudhishthira Maharaj is a lot of fear in his heart because he was already witnessing the effect of Kali Yuga. And he said, uh, um, um, how are Yadus, Krishna's family, um, um, Krishna's dynasty, how is Dwarka, um, um, did anything happen to you on the way? Um, um, were you not respected properly when you went to Dwarka or received well? Did anybody said something to you? Did anybody criticize anyone? Um, so he's asking so many reasons, but this Maharaj has no guts to ask um, um, Arjuna that um, has Krishna left all of us? And um, hearing those, Arjuna broke down himself. He could not contain because um, grief when shared... Uh, becomes like that. Um, so Kali Kalmashu Nashanam. So Kali Yuga has those so many faults, but the effect of Kali are destroyed. Um, we see uh, so many people are fighting over so many different, different small, small things. But you see in a life of devotee, um, they don't get anything and they are still satisfied. So it means they are beyond those cat race and monkey race and dog race where people are fighting like cats and dogs over trifles, over small things. And devotees are okay any without anything. That shows that they are internally more satisfied. Um, so simply through the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, men are purified in this age of Kali. And the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna will appear in front of the chanter as the brilliant beams of sun after the clouds are dispelled. Um, uh, just like the clouds, you cannot see the sun. When clouds goes away, you see the very shining sun. Likewise, the cloud of Kali Yuga, in our initial chanting, we cannot see anything. When the cloud is dispelled, then everything becomes clear. Uh, Vyasadeva says this Srimad Bhagavatam 
is like the sun which has appeared to remove the clouds of ignorance um mm. uh, then brihad vishnu puran by chanting the holy name a sinful person counteracts the reaction to more sins than he is able to commit um one may say my life is very sinful then uh, the holy name can can counteract more sins than what we are able to commit in many many lifetimes um, um the effect of holy name example is ajamil we should not have doubts on this um we are now we may still have attachments if we are chanting the holy name but the effect of our sins are not there it is said that we don't have to go to yamaraj we don't have to suffer our life is become has become successful and purified um brihad vishnu pura one should have faith in in these scriptures one should not feel that these scriptures are an over exaggeration to emphasize um something but is just eventually will be able to realize these scriptures um it is one thing to hear but we may have doubt but then um devya gyan hire prakashito as we advance we everything starts making sense to us slowly slowly the things which doesn't make sense to us today will start making sense to us tomorrow but have that faith the scriptures are all perfect is just right now i have not been given the revelation to this but scriptures are perfect this place its force even when chanted unknowingly or unintentionally um the story of a muslim haram haram is a foul word a bad word haram means i don't know what it really means um but something like uh, um gali dena kuch aisa because one person stole something from the muslim cart and then he started running away and muslim became very upset and he started started haram 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 because it contains the word hara and it contains the word rama both words are there um he became purified and he does not have to suffer his sinful reactions to that extent even unintentional um chanting can remove one from the sins guaranteed if you just keep chanting even if we don't go back to godhead next birth human life is guaranteed and we don't have to suffer in the hellish plan that is 100000% guaranteed for all of us um but better if we can develop the taste in the holy name develop love for krishna and go back to god that there is nothing like that um, um lord shiva tells to his wife durga shri ram ram rameti rame rame manorame sahasra नाम तत्तुल्यम राम नाम वर्णने थ्री नेम्स ऑफ चैंटिंग ऑफ राम्स नेम इज वन थाउजेंड नेम्स ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु मेनी पीपल स्पेशली फ्रॉम साउथ आर वेरी मच अटैच टू चैंटिंग सहस्र नाम वी डोंट से एनी थिंग टू देम बट वेन दे आर रेडी वी टेल देम देर इज नो नीड यू कैन चैंट इन फैक्ट the means for advancement in this age of kali is chanting the names of god and uh, sahasra naam spoken by bhishma dev on the battlefield um, at the time of his death um vishnu sahasra naam um, it's chanting names of vishnu so in this age of kali the means is chanting the names of the lord so it will definitely help you you will be free from sins um it will help you advance uh, but then try to be effective we are already spending if we spend half an hour in chanting vishnu sahasra naam um you chant rama 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 and uh, you get the same spiritual progress and the same purification of the heart as chanting for half an hour the thousand names of lord vishnu sahasra naam naam punya naam trir avrit to tatvalam <laughs> this presentation has lot of dancing capacities ek avritya to krishna sya nama namaikam tat prayachati one time chanting krishna's holy name is three times chanting the holy name of lord rama um uh, tri avritya 
थ्री टाइम्स अवृत्या तो तत्फलम द फल द रिजल्ट ऑफ चैंटिंग थ्री टाइम्स थ्री टाइम्स वट सहस्र नाम नाम पुण्य नाम द पुण्य द डिवाइन बेनिफिट ऑफ सहस्रा सहस्रा इज थाउजेंड थाउजेंड नेम्स थ्री अवृत्या थ्री टाइम्स दैट थ्री टाइम्स थाउजेंड विच इज थ्री थाउजेंड थ्री अवृत्या तो तत्फलम द द द फल दैट वी गेट एक अवृत्या तो कृष्ण से यू चैंट वन टाइम एका एक अवृत्या तो कृष्ण से यू चैंट द नेम ऑफ कृष्ण नमय कम तत् परिय्छति दिस इज फ्रॉम ब्रह्मांड पुराण सो इनिशियली अवर अवर एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ द होली नेम ऑफ कृष्ण इज बेस्ड ऑन स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड वंस वी आर सो एब्जॉर्ब इन वृंदावन इन कृष्ण इन अवर डीप प्रेयर्स टू राधा एंड कृष्ण देर इज नो क्वेश्चन हु केयर्स वर स्क्रिप्चर्स इज द स्टेज कम्स वेन वन फील वेदर whether krishna is god or not whether hari krishna maha mantra works or not nothing matters to me i don't care i just want to keep chanting the holy names so at one point of time one goes beyond scriptures because of his own experience in krishna but that is a purified stage madhavendra puri says i don't care what what scripture says i just i am just attracted to this boy krishna i am just attracted to his names so this is a even advanced platform but in the beginning uh, our um, intellect and our mind should be satisfied by scriptural reference and then uh, we should be willing to act on that platform sanatan goswami he says uh, holy name causes the devotee to give up conventional duties meditation and worship um, we have so many duties many people try many kind of meditation many people do many form of worship um he says holy name causes the devotee to give up all these things i know many people they um um they were reading many many books um uh, doing many sorts of worship and uh, um, many kinds of meditation so you don't say anything to them you just tell them that's okay whatever you are inspired you can keep doing and then you cha- you start chanting the holy name of krishna um they were fasting on many many days they were doing many things to advance spiritually to get some spiritual benefit but once they start chanting the holy names um the holy name causes them to give up all such conventional things and eventually they say probably we have stopped fasting on these days we have stopped doing these this other kind of worship of demigods um we have stopped our process of yoga and meditation is it all right now we are just trying to chant the holy name we are thinking since krishna is all pure all perfect let me try it. is that is that all right so this is an effect of chanting of the holy name um it because the devotee becomes so absorbed satan goswami further says somehow or other chanted once awards liberation liberation means we don't have to suffer for our sins that kind of liberation not the liberation of going back to godhead because un un unknowingly chanting will free us from the sins but knowingly chanting with contemplation will give us love of godhead like ajamil chanted unknowingly he performed many sinful activities gave up his father and mother and his wife and children without marriage started living with a prostitute giving birth impregnating the prostitute one after the another with many children ro or he would robe to fulfill the desire of prostitute and did many things so many sinful activities but he chanted the name of narayana and he was liberated liberated means yamdutas cannot touch him anymore but he did not get love of god hit then vishnuta said well you were liberated but we cannot take you with us you are not qualified um that that it does not say that you chant one name and you become purified no you become free from sins you don't have to suffer um but continuous chanting with contemplation that will remove anarthas and that will as anarthas are removed unintentional unconventional chanting just harama haram um um 
it will not give you escape from cycle of birth and death just no suffering no suffering means you come back clean um but ajamil after that incident he went to haridwar and chanted the name of narayana narayana for many years uh 10 or 15 years i don't remember scriptures there is reference to that um while contemplating on the lord and uh, slowly he became purified this time it's one thing that we are free from the ill effect of our anarthas it's another thing that we are free from the anarthas itself um that requires contemplation um holy name of krishna is the highest nectar it is my very life and my only treasure this is sanatan goswami telling this is my only life and my only treasure uh shri chaitanya uh, charitamrita the highest level of scriptures it says tare madhe sarvashreshtha nama sankirtana niraparadhe nama laila paya prema dhana tare madhe all the remaining the the discussion is between lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and uh, the devotees ask shri chaitanya mahaprabhu personally um there are nine processes described in bhagavatam by pralad maharaj um what should we do and tare madhe sarva shreshtha in among all these mediums madhe 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 means mediums iske madhe se karo like that so among all this medium to advance spiritually sarva shreshtha nama sankirtana the best sarva shreshtha is nam sankirtana niraparadhe nama laila paya prema dhan aparad is offenses niraparad without offense nama laila if you chant without offense the name of krishna paya prema dhan it will give you love of god the highest benediction of the nine processes of devotional service the most important is to always chant the holy name of the lord if one does so avoiding the 10 kinds of offenses one will easily obtain the most valuable love of godhead um why there is no taste in chanting all the time all the time i mean this is a common experience other than those devotees who are very advanced one time one devotee one proper disciple visited his name is uh, bada hari prabhu you can search him great kirtaniya when he sings um, so much spiritual energy is created um, um, a highly divine personality he came and one devotee one mataji from grand rapids he came to grand rapids did kirtan and devotees were mesmerized so absorbed in the holy name so much divine energy and this mataji went to bada hari prabhu and she said prabhu why is it so difficult to chant uh, and bada hari prabhu proper disciple he told mata ji once you develop the taste in chanting the holy names you cannot stop chanting you cannot stop chanting and he spoke with such deep feelings and such love for the holy name it takes time we have to be patient um um one devotee ashle prabhupad prabhupad how long does it take to develop love of god to attain that stage of perfection in chanting <laughs> prabhupad said around 40 years <laughs> now naturally uh, uh, in other words prabhupad is trying to say it is possible in this life we just have to be consistent in our chanting don't worry if there is no taste in chanting don't worry try your best krishna is very merciful some day when we are depressed krishna will give us lot of taste some days some days we will always go through phases slowly slowly the phase will kind of fade out in the beginning there will be lot of inattention some attention and then serve associate be enthusiastic even if no enthusiasm within our heart act enthusiastically why most of the people cannot take up krishna consciousness because they have to go beyond mind they have to go beyond the stage of feelings uh, but association of those every devotee who has a very good who is experiencing a little amount of attraction to krishna krishna consciousness rest assured that devotee has went through this phase unless he is a pure devotee who has come to deliver 
लाइक भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर शिला प्रभुपाद द फर्स्ट टाइम दे हर्ड द होली नेम दे इमीजिएटली अटेन द स्टेज ऑफ स्पॉन्टेनियस डिवोशन एंड दे नेवर फेल डाउन फ्रॉम दैट पोजिशन um that is possible only if we are sufficiently i mean we have been purified from previous life such people become acharyas and goswamis and the propagator a common man like myself um we have to go through this process if we don't go through this process now next lifetime krishna will attract us with the association of devotees and we'll begin from there whatever devotional service you have rendered rest assured your next birth human life is guaranteed and if even if you give up krishna consciousness from tomorrow don't worry about it rest assured within few lifetimes you are going back home back to godhead your life is successful you are you are all extremely highly fortunate people there is no loss narad muni says even if one give up krishna consciousness because whatever taste you have developed little bit next life you will again meet association of devotees you will be attracted to the holy name you will start from there it may take some time but going to going back home back to godhead becoming pure is guaranteed for all of you why not do it in this life why why again take birth and why delay the process why again go through because when we give up krishna consciousness when we give up uh material anxieties will increase um and uh, mind chattering of the mind will increase we are all looking for happiness why not become divine now today or tomorrow uh why not experience this in this life that's what we are actually seeking for the soul is hankering hankering for that divine experience why not work in that direction to experience in in this life if we don't experience that then material nature material energy will make us suffer why do we want to go through the struggle we have sufficiently struggled in our lives millions of lifetimes we have struggled um now it's a time to become more divine and more absorbed as long as we are on the platform of naam aparad or naam abhas our chanting will always be will not will chanting will not be will not be always be taste for <laughs> okay <laughs> some grammar <laughs> grammar issue so as long as we are not on the platform of naam aparad and naam abhas and we will discuss about everything connected to chanting will come in this week and next week and you will have a very fair idea about a naam tatva um, this 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 presentation i found it almost complete other than very deep tatva the rahasya of bhajan by bhakti vinod thakur and other deeper subject matters um a basic understanding everything that we need to know at this point of time is covered in this presentations simply continue to chant and one will certainly make an experience of krishna's real nature so um even if we are not able to taste the chanting um simply continue to chant and slowly experience will come of krishna's real nature which is divine sweet um fulfilling satisfying holy name krishna is like a sugar candy uh, uh, i don't know how many of you like sugar but i don't mind i don't mind sugar so holy name of krishna is like sugar candy our tongue is afflicted by jaundice of avidya we cannot taste anything sweet we have discussed this example when we are when we when we have jaundice sweet taste bitter and this jaundice is material attachments our material life uh, attachment to that um, anarthas um, ignorance of our a uh, lack of our understanding of our being part and parcel of krishna krishna is so merciful krishna is telling in bhagavad gita mama ivam sa jeeva loke you are mine you are my part and parcel krishna has already told us about our relationship with him aham sarvasya prabhu we belong to krishna um um but the ignorance remains what is the ignorance in the form of doubts that's why arjuna called krishna keshi nisudhana please remove my doubts that we have not realized it it's not revealed to us 
that we belong to Krishna. Krishna is our father. Krishna says, Aham Bija Pradapita. I am the seed giving father of Arjuna. So the transcendent knowledge, Bhagavad Gita is our basis. The transcendent knowledge is given to us by Krishna. Um, but because we lack full conviction in the scriptures, um, we are not willing to act on it. So this is called avidya. Ignorance remains. Even after knowing, because knowledge is not something that we can get it by hearing. It's something that has to be revealed. Divya Gyan Hide Prakashito, revealed from our heart. Um, so that ignorance remains. Because of that ignorance of our true identity that we all originally are Krishna conscious beings, Prabhupada says, um, 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 because of that ignorance, we cannot taste the sweet sugar candy like the names of Krishna. We cannot taste anything sweet. By carefully chanting, chanting has to be careful. Um, chanting is the, the supremely most important activity. So one should not take chanting careless. Careless chanting means somehow I need to finish my Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. While, while, while doing anything, while walking. Walking is okay as long as while walking you are only trying to focus on Krishna. That walking is okay. Not like um, let me put my clothes in the washer. Let me make a call in between. Somebody is asking many things and let me interact. And in between, Hare Krishna, 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 Ram, 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 and eating the word, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Ram, 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 Ram. Many devotees, I saw them chanting, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Ram, 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 कुछ भी बोल रहे हैं भगवान का नाम जब करना है कुछ भी नहीं बोलना अरे नाम 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 � um, but then if we take it lightly and cheaply, um, then very soon it becomes very distractive. We are not able to focus and uh, our faith also reduces because our faith has a relationship with our experience many times. But somehow or other devotee association, scriptures, repeated instruction, um, um, service in the temple keeps us going. Somehow we drag ourselves and that will help us to achieve perfection. So by carefully chanting, because if we if we become uncareful with chanting, then our only hope, our only means by which our scorching, our heart which is looking eager for divinity, that hope is lost because the method is, is not properly taken. So by carefully chanting the sweet names every day, Natural taste awakens within the tongue and the disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Um, this, this doubts and arising because of ignorance of our identity, false identification with the body and everything connected to the body, our false identification with them. Um, all this ignorance is gradually removed. And then we come to the understanding, actually I belong to Radha and Krishna. Um, I belong to uh, spiritual world. I am a spiritual living entity. And then one becomes more and more absorbed in those deep mellows. And um, um, then spiritual life is very easy. Um, it is that, that, that description which is given. In the beginning, spiritual life is difficult. Uh, but Krishna says happiness in the mode of goodness is poison in the beginning, nectar in the end. That is referring to our spiritual life which is poison in the beginning, maybe based on your previous life. Doesn't matter. I mean, what does low birth means? Low birth means we have a lot of attachments. The moment we start, the moment a thought comes and we find material desires as sweet as nectar. And that's a state of avidya. Any material desire, our eyes become like, I can, I want to enjoy so this is called avidya. Um, and uh, till the time we have this avidya, when with that avidya you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, it feels very heavy. The chanting feels very heavy because 
of ignorance our attraction is toward ah our our mind immediately becomes ecstatic with the thought of material enjoyment and becomes depressed at chanting of the holy name so this is our disease condition so what we have to do is carefully chant the sweet names of the lord um, gradually this avidya will be removed gradually and um, jaundice also it's a disease you eat sugar candy um you feel bitter but you keep eating it just like all the sugar candy is bitter um all the sugar candy is bitter all the sugar candy is sweet tastes bitter in a in a disease condition likewise we are in a diseased condition although the holy name is sweet and the whole vrindavan is within the holy name it tastes bitter because of our ignorance but just like the sweet candy is the medicine for the jaundice disease the holy name is a medicine and slowly slowly our attraction and our absorption in holy name will increase okay so i see uh um it's already 622 let me cover two two three slides and then we will end for today relationship between the chanting of the holy name and the different level of devotional service um um there are three kinds this is the last topic we discussed there are three kind of devotees um one time devotees came from kulinagram to meet uh, lord chaitanya and uh, they asked lord chaitanya who is a vaishnav who is a vaishnav and mahaprabhu said who chant once the name of krishna he is a vaishnav who even once chant the name of krishna he is a vaishnav so from that definition we all are vaishnavas then kulinagram devotees they would make ropes for jagannath rath yatra and uh, because what happened in the beginning the ropes sometimes would break jagannath rath rath was very heavy and uh, the cart is too big the lord is very heavy also thousands of people pull so sometimes the rope would break so mahaprabhu instructed some devotees who were expert in making ropes so they were the devotees of kulinagram and mahaprabhu told them you your service is every year make strongest ropes for lord jagannath rath so they won't break so service won't break in between so mahaprabhu they brought the ropes the rath yatra happened very nice so mahaprabhu was very pleased with them and mahaprabhu said uh, mahaprabhu expressed his gratitude he hugged them and the devotee said uh, my lord we have a question who is a vaishnav then mahaprabhu said who once chant the name of krishna who is a, that is a vaishnav so the devotees were very satisfied and then they left and next year again they brought the ropes they pleased lord chaitanya by their service then again they asked the same question to mahaprabhu my lord who is a vaishnav and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said one who always chants the holy name of krishna he is a vaishnav so this is a madhyam adhikari kanishtha adhikari who once chant the holy name he is a vaishnav then an advanced devotee who always chants the holy name he has such absorption he is a vaishnav so the devotees were very uh, happy because in the beginning they were themselves growing in their krishna consciousness and when they came again they themselves advanced sufficiently in their krishna consciousness so when they asked mahaprabhu answered according to what the stage of devotion they were in and then the devotees were very happy that we are vaishnavas and then um, the devotees left and then next year again they brought the ropes for jagannath rath yatra and they went to lord chaitanya and they said mahaprabhu was very pleased again for their service then they said my lord who is a vaishnav and mahaprabhu said a, a first class vaishnav is he whose very presence makes other chant the holy name of krishna just by seeing them um, devotion arises in one's heart just by seeing them i see that uh, um with the, me personally i see that with my spiritual master i just just by seeing him my heart becomes filled with devotion um 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 so um a first class vaishnav is one just by seeing just by his mere presence one starts chanting the holy name of krishna this is a a 
a pure devotee a pure devotee of krishna okay now uh, although i have eagerness and desire to do more i see the time is already closing 6:30 so we will stop here are there any questions uh anybody would like to ask are we able to go and understand the presentation prabhu uh, yes, this is suresh yes. suresh prabhu yes this class is so good prabhu today's class is excellent okay so that's, thank you that's... so much actually yeah i learned a lot okay thank you so much suresh prabhu and if we see the presentation more and more um it will reveal many many nice um revelation on the holy name and very grateful to you suresh prabhu thank you okay. hari krishna prabhu ji this is tushar tushar prabhu yeah prabhu ji so when we uh, when we chant mahamantra we should um pronounce it very correctly right uh, to have its effect if you don't pronounce it correctly like uh, while saying for example we say hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari hari and then in second line we say hari rama uh, it's not rama it's hari ram hari ram 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 hari hari or what is it um okay, how okay. it is important yeah well that is okay i heard in one lecture should we chant rama should we chant ram should we chant ramo some people like during kirtan hare ramo hare ramo 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 hare hare or hare rama hare rama nobody usually says hare ram hare ram 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 it's so that is all right um that pronunciation is okay krishna bhava grai janatana but improper pronunciation is not good where improper pronunciation is तो पता ही नहीं चल रहा भगवान का नाम जप कर रहे हैं भगवान का नाम काट रहे हैं नया मंत्र बना रहे हैं क्या कर रहे हैं कुछ पता ही नहीं चल रहा दैट इज नॉट गुड बट हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वी कैन बी फास्ट बट एट द सेम टाइम वी आर प्रोनाउंसिंग ईच वर्ड closely and that is good enough does it answer tushar prabhu yes prabhu ji thank you okay thank you any other question all right prabhu ji um um in the um, mahamantra the word is hare right hare krishna hare yes, rama yes um but uh, when we are, when we are explaining the uh, word it came as hara yes prabhu ji yes so w- what is the connection yeah actually hare comes from the word hara um that's what is mentioned in the detailed explanation of hare krishna maha mantra and hara means shrimati radha rani um but um it is i mean the way the mantra is given in the scriptures is hari krishna omri but the root word is coming from the word hara we don't chant hara krishna hara krishna krishna i mean maybe for practical purposes i don't want to speculate but the mantra is this and it the root word it comes from is hara this is all i can say prabhu ji sorry yes good that's uh, okay. prabhu ji okay. yeah thank you, thank you. thank you we will end here very grateful to all of you thank you so much vansha kalpata rudhesha kripa sindhu be evacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha anant kodi vaishnave inde ki jai shri prabhu pad ki jai thank you so much hari krishna hari krishna prabhu hari